Welcome to Will It Work? I'm Kevin. Today we're looking at the Sega Genesis 16-bit. Technically you could call this the Genesis 1. Uh, this is the console that brought Sega into the game. Uh, their first three systems, which was Sega Mark 1, uh, which went up against the NES in the early days, uh, which was then modified to be the Sega Mark II, uh, was not a success and was only available in Japan. And then they came out with the Sega Mark III, also known as the Master System in the United States, which was also not a success, but it sold enough uh, that Sega, you know, kept at it and came out with the Genesis, also known as the Mega Drive, in Japan. Uh, the battle against the Super Nintendo, which is where this kind of landed, uh, it definitely fell in favor of Nintendo in Japan. Uh, the Super NES did well, but in the United States, uh, the Genesis did better than the Super Nintendo, at least while they were competitive. I don't know about years after and all that kind of stuff, but while they were competitive, uh, Genesis, Sega did really well. They also did really well in Europe. I don't know how they fared against Nintendo in Europe, but they did well there. And the Genesis had a good following uh, overall, and that's why we know the name Sega today is primarily because of the Genesis. Uh, this was a, uh, you know, a 16-bit system, uh, you know, used like a 6800 processor. I think actually there's probably some 32-bit in there somewhere. Uh, but, you know, if you want to split hairs and all that kind of thing. But it was main, mainly a 16-bit bus. And so it had, um, it had a good processor in it. And it, uh, it, it ran, I think, about... I'd have to look this up. I think it did about 32 colors on screen at once. Uh, but, you know, it had a lot more processing power overall, so it could push it could push around the 2D graphics pretty good, right? Uh, the uh, Super Nintendo, for instance, had stronger um, graphics in the sense of not so much resolution, but it, it could do 256 colors on screen at once which can make things look a lot nicer. It, all, it also had some special modes, you know, sometimes you might have heard of like uh, the Mode 7 or System 7 or something like that, that it was basically like a scaling mode that it would often use, especially in RPGs, to uh, swirl things around and do things. Uh, and so, um, but Sega would uh, argue that it had the ability to, you know, um, do more processing than they used to have this buzz thing called blast processing because they had more processing power. I don't know, you know what I mean, with CPUs, I don't know if that matters so much in the 16-bit era uh, because neither of them were pushing around 3D too much. Um, I do know that with Nintendo, when they went to do things like, um, you know, Star Fox or whatever, they they would use a special helper CPU that would be on their uh, cartridges, right? And um, like the VX chip or VFX chip or something like that, that would enable it to be able to render that 3D better because the 6502 processor they had, it only ran at like, you know, I think like 2 megahertz or something. Like I, I'd have to look it all up, but you can look all this stuff up too. It doesn't really matter. Right? You know, I'm just reminiscing about it a little bit, but what it came down to it is, is like, what really kind of helped Sega, I think, was the fact that with this generation, with this 16-bit generation, Nintendo took a stand on keeping their consoles uh, for kids. And so they no longer wanted game developers to make games that contained blood and gore uh, on their systems. I think violence was okay. Uh, I don't know their whole terms of use, but for the most part, you couldn't make a game that was overly violent, and you certainly couldn't make an adults-only type of title for the Super Nintendo, where Sega was like, well, if you want to make it on our system, go for it, right? Uh, and so this made it so like Mortal Kombat, which was a very popular game at the time, 
uh, was not um, arcade uh, exact like it would be on the Genesis, at least in terms of the fatalities and that sort of thing. And a lot of stuff on the Super Nintendo got to be a little bit silly, where the blood would be green instead of red, and there would be these modes where you could switch it, etc. But, um, you know, I think they just lost some licenses from, like, Mortal Kombat, etc. And I think Nintendo then, you know, they, they came out later with, like, Killer Instinct and that sort of stuff to, you know, sort of, you know, we had Rare make their own fighting game to kind of compete and, and all that sort of thing. But that sort of just helped Sega. Like, if you wanted games to be, like, uh, closer to the arcade, the, the, the thought process was, is, you know, you would go with the Genesis. And Sega, for their part, really supported the uh, Genesis with a lot of peripherals, a lot of add-ons, and uh, made it so, like, if you invested in this system, uh, they were going to support you with, um, uh, you know, a lot of additional features and things, and they did. I mean, they added the CD, they added 32X, uh, you had, uh, you know, a lot of growth with the Genesis, and it was, you know, the one console that I think Sega really got right uh, and uh, did a really good job with, especially in the United States. And, um, yeah, uh, there's not, I really don't have too much negative to say about it, you know. I, I don't really like to uh, think of either the Super NES or the Genesis as being lesser systems. They both had great games, and a lot of times they didn't have too many games that were um, the same on both systems. I mean, yeah, you had Street Fighter and that kind of thing, uh, but, uh, you know, they both had strengths in different areas and, you know, and they competed where it made, where it made sense. And so, you know, both systems today, if you look back on, 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 and on their game libraries, they're both strong and, uh, yeah, they're a lot of fun. And that's the important thing. I mean, we, we're basically buying these things, uh, when they come out so we can have fun. So first model, it's a little bit weird. You know, you got this uh, headphone jack with a, with a volume slider that's rather big. You don't really see that on systems, but it was a nice touch. You have this rubberized sort of uh, reset button here, uh, on off, you know, cartridge based, two joystick ports, and um, on the back, you know, you have a, a RF out, and then you had like a media out here for your um, component cables, etc. Uh, so, you know, not based strictly in the console for the media because that way maybe they could do like a SCART or something cable uh, or that sort of thing. Now, I have a weird situation where I have this Genesis and I picked this up recently actually so we need to figure out if this works but it just came like this. It didn't come with any cables or anything. I think I have the cables but I might not. Uh, and so this video might get paused at some point and I'll tell you if I had to go and order the cables. The reason is, is because I feel like along the way something happened to my Genesis because I have a lot of Genesis stuff, but I don't, I don't have the Genesis. I, I used to have the Sega CD and I know at one point, so, you know, decades ago, I tried the Sega CD. It didn't work. They were very cheap at the time and I'm pretty sure I threw it away rather than tried to fix it. Uh, that was a mistake, I think. Looking back on it, I probably should have tried to have fixed it. Um, but I ended up tossing it. Uh, so, um, but I don't know what happened to the Genesis that I was using to connect it to. And, and that's just one of those things where, you know, that was a console that I was probably using at some point and it uh, disappeared. So let's take a look at what I have because I have kind of a box of Genesis stuff. And let's see if we can find everything. And I don't think we will. Uh, <laughs> that's just my luck with these sorts of things. But um, we'll take a look here and we'll see what we do have. So, we do have some Sega CD things like um, Echo, the Dolphin, um, and uh, Dracula that's never been opened. It's still sealed on clearance for $4.97 from KB Toy and Hobby. Uh, we have um, the box for NHL 98. Um instructions that doesn't matter we have the six pack for the Genesis right so all six games on one cartridge and if I recall I think this may have come with a late edition uh, Genesis but I could be wrong uh, probably not model one it might be model two or model three uh, they just kept 
bringing these down uh, in terms of models. And generally I don't, we'll talk about this a little bit with PlayStation, but generally I don't uh, collect different models, like when they do revisions, unless they do something which substantially changes the, uh, the console in a way that makes it so it either can play games that it wasn't able to do before, right? Or uh, um, maybe add some sort of feature that is necessary to do something different. And uh, so, like, for instance, when I looked at Lynx 1 and Lynx 2, I didn't split those up into two different systems. I've talked about this before. Uh, because Lynx 2 wasn't that much different than Lynx 1. It was just a remodel, made it smaller, etc. It's kind of like going PlayStation 3, PlayStation 3 Slim. Now, they, now, the original PlayStation 3 had full backwards compatibility, and the PlayStation Slims, I believe, do not, at least not full. So, uh, but there's not that, you know, there's nothing on the Slim other than size that makes it so it is, like, substantially better or in some way or does something unique that the original PlayStation 3 didn't do. So we don't count the Slim in my collection as a different console it's just a re you know it's just in a different case that kind of thing some people might on their collections look at uh these things as different units and i would then you know when we were like sorting lists to see for instance who had more units uh we would have to then compare uh differently because um i just don't i just don't want to sit here and try and collect every remodel or serial number of a certain system there's guys that do that there's guys out there that own like all of the different variants of like the xbox 360 and that kind of thing but that's just not what i'm doing i feel like if it hasn't substantially changed your ability to play games on it it's not that big of a deal so we have a original switch box here which um is good uh but it is a um you know it's an rf type deal it would be nice if it um, worked with uh if i have the uh video cable so we can do composite out um it does say power base and i'm wondering if this might be to the mega or the um master system rather than the genesis which is possible but we do have this here so if we need to we can maybe use that i don't think we'll need it though we have a sega power supply plug-in power supply for use with power base I know there's a base system that sits right on top of this that allows you to play Master System games, but I don't think it's powered. So I'm thinking possibly Power Base, again, is talking about uh, Master System, the Power Base of the Master System. Um, so we'll put that aside for now. We have a Sega Arcade Power Stick. It's a little dusty. Uh, and this is pretty good. It's It's... It's not clicky, um, but it's uh, it's got a nice metal bottom here, and it um, has these mega fire buttons, and you can speed it up and slow it down, and it has fairly good buttons. But I don't feel like this is arcade quality, but it's it's pretty close. You know, if you were going to play a three button game with an arcade stick, this would be pretty cool. That's the only downfall is that if it would have six buttons. We'd be rocking and rolling, you know, with some some fighters. But uh, with the three buttons, a little less so. But Genesis in its early days, that's just all it supported. All right, so now we've got the Sega RF unit, right? And we've got a pin out here, but I don't think that goes back here. No, that is definitely wrong size so that one is a mystery sorry it's out of focus there my camera my camera's good but it really really doesn't like to switch focus very often it's very picky um mark 80106 so i'll have to see what that's for <clears throat> we have a traditional uh, Genesis controller with the three buttons. We'll go ahead and put that into port one. So we, at least we have a controller plugged in. 
We have another Sega RF switch. This one's different, but it also has a smaller, um, you know, output, probably from like a Sega 2 or something, you know, which I may have had, or it could have come from the um, Sega CD or something, I don't know. We have a, what I believe is a component out, or a composite out, um, which also looks like it's for, I almost feel like, you know, I'm almost feeling like this might be Saturn. I'm thinking this, this smaller round and these RF units, I bet you those are for the Saturn. So, some Saturn stuff got into my Genesis box. Which is good to know. We'll separate that stuff. We'll keep the, um, the ones that are more traditional. The Genesis. Now, in terms of the power supply for the base system, again, that might still be one for the uh, Master System. And we have the Sega Class 2 power supply use with video game. Come on camera, you can do it. Doesn't know what it wants to focus on. Oh, come on. There it goes. <clears throat> so I think this is the right one. We're going to see, we're going to find out. Now I do own some other things that play Genesis games. If you have knowledge of Genesis, you might know about the Nomad, you might know about Laser Active, you might know about um, well I forgot. Maybe that's all there is. Maybe that's all I've got that's handy. I don't know. Let's see. And that does not fit. We're just losing it. We're losing it. So this must power something. But I couldn't tell you which it powers. It doesn't power a master system. Now does this one fit from the base system? See the base unit. This base one plugs in. Power base. All right, let's um, let's use the power of the internet and see what the uh, Sega Power Base is. It might just be this unit. It's just that I don't know why they would call it that. Sega Power Base. Yeah, you know, there's the Power Base converter. I know that, but I'm pretty sure the Power Base converter didn't get. Um, pretty sure it didn't have a power thing on it. Well, let's see if we can cause a fire. Let me plug this in <laughs> and uh, see if it works. I couldn't imagine that the power base requires additional power. It might, but... Yeah, the fact is, is that it, would it require more power than the Genesis itself? Probably not. Now, at the moment, I've got it off. N no sparks came out, which is good. Um, I don't think there's an LED on this to tell. Well, I guess there is right here. So why don't we um, pop in some Yazzie, which is our go-to Sega Genesis cartridge at the moment. Turn the power on. Yeah, looks like we got positive power. So power base, that's what this is. In the early days, Sega Genesis called this the power base. The power base converter converts it into a master system. Right? Just guessing here, but I'm thinking that's probably right. Okay, so we do have an RF out. So we are going to be able to get video out of this one way or the other. But let's see what else we got. We've got... Uh, College Football 95. Now, I didn't pay for this or anything. Um, 
1994 Jim Simmons and High Score Productions. I mean, I've never understood, like, the appeal of college football video games. NFL I can kind of understand, but college ball, no. I just don't get it. I mean, we've got... Not for right now. We have another class two power supply here. It really doesn't want to focus. Cause it's like it's like it sees the Genesis and it's like I'm focusing on the Genesis right now, Kevin. There. So that's another one, and it has the same layout as the last one. So I'm thinking these might either be for uh, Nomad, might be for Sega CD, who knows, 32X. We've got a third one. This is what I'm saying. Like, my collection... Um, is weird because I have this is a big this is a black tip here again focusing focus I know my cell phone did a better job of focusing than this um, mirrorless uh, cam it really doesn't want to do it but I, I, it might just be user error on my part it's back way like here I'll just back way off this has got a black plug so this is probably also a able to power this. What does it say here? Output 1.2 amp. It's interesting. It doesn't actually say what voltage it outputs. It says input 120 volt, 60 hertz, 35 watts. Output, oh there it is, 9 volt, 1.2 amp. And this base one that I plugged into the wall is also 9 volt, but it is 1 amp. Hmm, interesting. Well, we'll leave it on the one amp right now, since we don't know which one goes in for sure. One amp is safer than the, the other one. So that's what I've got. That's what I've got handy right now. So we'll kind of roll with this, and we'll see if this one's working. Uh, I do have a regular Sega controller. That is uh, the 6-pin model. It does not say Genesis on it. Uh, it does, uh, it has a mode button up here. Um, so I'm not quite sure if this was made specifically for Genesis or maybe it was made for one of the other, you know, things that Sega had, but either way. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to connect this RF adapter for the, for the sake of um, moving things along since I don't happen to have the SCART cable. And uh, we'll um, hopefully get a video signal out of this. I think we will. And uh, so I'll switch over to the video side, and we can um, just see if the game's work and if this unit is working. And then we'll uh, talk a little bit about uh, what comes after this, because uh, just the base uh, Genesis itself, as we all know, isn't the whole story. Here we go. Okay, here we are looking at the Sega Genesis. I put Yazzie in. Uh, if you've been following the series, this is probably the third time I've used Yazzie as an example, but it's a homebrew game that came out uh, in 2020. Uh, it's pretty fun. Uh, it's released by Mega Cat, and um, yeah, I purchased it with my own money. I like to support some homebrew software development on classic systems here and there, so I like to pick up a few games for different stuff. We'll probably look at other ones along the way. Uh, so the screen's probably going to be a little bit blurry since we're using the RF out. Again, I believe the Genesis did come with the normal composite out cable, uh, but I don't happen to have one. I have freaking everything else, but I don't have that. So uh, either way, let's just go ahead and it's nice to see that it's working and we've got a display. So let's go ahead and see how our controlling is, how our controls work. We'll use this on an emulator the last couple of times. So uh, we'll see if this uh, feels any different. Actually, I use it on an XI, which is not an emulator. It's a real system. Oh, I just killed myself. 
Let's try that again. All right, so I get the hammer. Now I should be able to dig. Yeah, kind of push this button a little hard. I mean, control seems pretty solid. Let's try one more level with this one. Okay, so that worked out fine. Uh, I'm going to switch controllers and we'll remove the standard Sega Genesis controller. We'll use the six button controller. And let's go ahead and take out Yazzy. And let's put in the only other Sega game I have right now. Well, I do have NHL 95, but let's just look at this college game. Because, I mean, when was the last time you looked at a college sports football game from 1995? Probably has been a while. Probably you have never looked at a college sports football No, I don't know. Maybe you're, like, into college sports. Huh? Using that digital audio. Showing off. Yeah, Bill Walsh, College Football 95. I know that Bill Walsh. No, I, I have no idea. You, wanna, you always want to do Ohio State versus Michigan. It's my, it's my advice. And you want to play for Ohio State. Kind of interesting just to see this, you know what I mean? Like this is before we had like full motion video and stuff. So it's like you're putting all this into the cartridge. It cracks me up. 95, so we're probably uh, we're probably at the um, CD era of gaming. So this is probably still trying to be competitive to some extent with. Uh, the much more expensive game consoles that had come out at that time. Boo! Oh. Um. We'll receive. Where the the uh, action button is C rather than A. I mean, I know they basically just used the Madden engine, you know, and then just sort of dress it up to make it look like you know it's college ball. I couldn't imagine they would create a whole different game engine. Um, well, it looks pretty good. I mean, for a 16 bit game. Pretty good football game. Oh. oh my goodness. Alright, so at this point, Sega Genesis looks pretty good. Six cards job. Turn it back on, see if anything happens. Nope, just get a black screen. So here's what I'm gonna tell you. I do not currently own a uh, Sega C D. Uh, I did show us uh, Sega CD on the JVC XI. I just don't have the first party version of it from Sega itself, but it's the same thing on the XI. I do talk about that. So um, I probably will get a Sega CD at some point. Um, it's just that, uh, right, you know, it's kind of like looking for a deal, right? Because people right now, game consoles online, for whatever reason, are extremely expensive in the aftermarket, and they really shouldn't be. 
as high as they are. I, I don't think the demand justifies it. You know, it's it's very unusual. Uh, but um, I mean, some things make sense, right? But then other things don't. Like if you want a thousand dollars for an Adventure Vision, totally makes sense. Adventure Vision's rare. It's not a good console by any measure. But it's very very rare to even see one show up. So you know, okay, it's you know pay the money, whatever. But, like, take a Laser Active, for instance. Laser Active is not rare. It is on, uh, like, every, like, you can go on eBay now and find all kinds of different Laser Actives. Like, there's new Laser Active listed, like, every day. They want thousands of dollars for Laser Active. It's not worth it. I mean, you know, what for? Just because it's a laser disc player and you didn't see one when you were growing up it's not rare i've seen ones brand new in boxes for sale uh in, you know in sets uh, uh you know it had like a 3d imager and things you can find all that stuff the market of course you know it will determine price people are going to spend that kind of money on something it's fine but we're getting too many consoles i think that are in the 500 to a thousand dollar range and um it, it's um a lot of money it's a lot of money for a classic system especially when things are being emulated all the time so with the sega cd again that wasn't a very good system uh but i would like to eventually have one i'll get one when it makes sense but i'm not going to spend 300 dollars for one let's put it like that um uh, however i do have a laser active <clears throat> and it is a story in and of itself uh, which will play sega cd so we'll take a look at that when I get to it. It'll probably be later because it actually needs a little bit of work, which I'll talk about when I do get to it. Uh, I do have a Nomad, and we are going to visit 32X. And 32X, I believe, I believe may have some games that are on CD uh, as well as cartridge, but I'm not sure about that. I'm going to look into it. And um, so if there are 32X CD games... Uh, we're going to look at that as well. So that will only be done on the original Genesis. So, uh, yeah, so we've got more to do with the Genesis coming up. But overall, the base system, which was the main system, uh, works great. And it's a keeper. So uh, thanks for watching. And, uh, yeah, let's move on to something else.